Thanks for your support as a channel member, Pulse Potato! Season 2 has been something of a breakout year for AHGP. We've scored so many more points than I could possibly have imagined. The only thing that we haven't really done is get to the podium, but there's potential for that in today's episode. We're finishing off Season 2. We've got Las Vegas, Qatar and Abu Dhabi. <laughs> Hello folks and welcome to a brand new episode of F1 Manager Creator Team here with AHGP gearing up for the final rounds of Season 2. The 2025 campaign comes to a close and we are in a fantastic position. You can see here we have got 70 points at AHGP. Just phenomenal. We are hunting down the likes of Aston Martin and Mercedes and McLaren and one day we'll be toppling Red Bull as well. And with a regulation change coming for 2026, maybe it's not far away. So uh, yeah, we are doing amazing things considering where we were last season and we had absolutely no points. But Paul Aaron and Fred Vesey have done brilliantly this year. Uh, Paul Aaron staying with us for several seasons to come. Not completely sure what to do with Fred yet. Do we keep him for another year? Do we replace him with potentially one of our junior drivers, uh, Pulse Potato or Justin Inokaitis, who are both getting themselves warmed up in Formula 2. Maybe we leave them in there for another year to see if they win the championship. But honestly, I think they're ready. Zane Maloney should be on the F1 grid. He's overall 80 rated. That's incredible. Um, but yeah, our drivers are basically as good as our race drivers. 80 and 78 for Aaron and Vesti. 77 and 78 for Justin and Pulse Potato. So uh, I'll cross that bridge probably at the end of the season. Also, the rules regulation is a power unit shakeup. So I'm currently debating how best to sort of simulate that. I'll have to use the editor to do it. I'm discussing with the channel members at the moment as to how best to do that. We're looking at possibly a wheel spinner to randomize things. So Mercedes might have the best power unit again, but they might also have terrible durability. So, you know, it could throw a few curveballs. I have also decided which power unit I'm using, regardless of how that shakes out. And I'll reveal to you now that we're going to go with the Renault power unit for next season. So that might shape whether we can keep Fred Vesti or not. Will Mercedes release him and he becomes a fully fledged AHGP driver or not? We will have to wait and see. But yeah, we'll be using Renault power units from next season, regardless of what happens in the wheel spinner. So you've heard it here first. Uh, we will be using Renault power. That's because I drive a Renault. I actually own a Renault car. So uh, it makes sense. Um, we are going to be simulating the Las Vegas Grand Prix today, and then we'll be doing some sort of short highlights of Qatar and Abu Dhabi. So um, I'm going to go through qualifying, and we'll see what happens in the Las Vegas Grand Prix. All right, qualifying is simulated. Let's see how we got on. Wow, we are sixth with Paul Aaron. Where is Fred Vesti? Oh, he is... Uh, 14th that's uh less impressive he was actually p3 or 4 in q1 i think which was pretty pretty good he got a massive toe off of paul aaron because I, I played q1 because i wanted to make sure the setup changes went on the car so paul will actually start p5 for this race which we're not going to see because we're going to simulate it so fifth and 14th thanks to sonoda's grid penalty uh, i suppose if we just do this and then this i don't know i don't know if this makes a difference when you simulate the race um we'll just leave the strategy as it is um hard soft medium for fred and i think it's something of a similar flavor for all our medium hard soft so um yeah let's simulate the race let's see what happens how did we do this is where we get like a random podium or something and we weren't there to see it please don't let us miss the podium well that's oscar piastri <laughs> I don't know why we're looking at Oscar Piastri. I mean, Oscar Piastri is a fun guy. And McLaren. Why are we seeing McLaren? Well, Max Verstappen won. Lewis Hamilton was second. George Russell third. Okay, so we didn't get a random podium. We didn't score any points at all. Uh, what is Joe doing in the top 10? How's that happened? Okay, well, 
Maybe we should have played that race. <laughs> it doesn't make a difference because RB have got two points. They've doubled their points tally. Um, they're not going to catch us. It makes not a blind bit of difference. So uh, we'll just move straight on to Qatar. So we'll see you for, for that race. All right, we start 10th and 12th for the Qatar Grand Prix. I've underfueled both cars. We're going to be going light on the tyres and hopefully it can propel us forwards. So uh, let's get straight into the race without any further ado and see what we can achieve. All right, two rounds to go. And this is the first time we've seen the Qatar Grand Prix circuit on this game. Five red lights. The lights are out. The race is on. How are our drivers doing off the line? Oh, the, the right-hand side of the grid is very slow away. And uh, Paul Aaron has moved up to eighth position. Mixture of so mostly softs, someone on Sonoda on hards, and there's a few drivers on mediums. This circuit notorious for tyre wear. Max Verstappen is last. He had a grid penalty, so uh, that's why he's there. And uh, we've made a successful getaway with Paul Aaron up a place. But we're down a position with Vesti. Ah, Fred has just had a spin. <laughs> he is off the track. That's not where we want him to be. And uh, yeah, I think that's that's his race pretty much wrecked without some sort of intervention from a safety car, which is very unlikely at this circuit. There he goes, losing the back end, and he's down to P22. On the other hand, Paul Aaron is up to seventh, so um, he's going pretty nicely. Did he get DRS there? He did not. But he's homing in on the back of Antonelli, actually, down the pit straight, which is interesting. Let's keep our eyes on what Paul Aaron can achieve today. This is Paul Aaron overtaking the Red Bull of Yuki Tsunoda for P7. Um, Lewis Hamilton came past in the Ferrari. That's them up ahead. So we're doing a decent job. The fuel might be an issue, though. This is a circuit where it is traditionally tricky to, to recover the fuel. So uh, I might have stitched us up royally. Uh, we might have the classic AHGP conundrum of we didn't put enough fuel in the car to finish the race. Um, but... For Vesti, that might not be an issue because he will probably be a lap down, although he is up to 17th position now. There he is. And uh, Paul Aaron, it will be an issue because he's likely to be on the lead lap just in P7. So uh, he's going all right. We need to recover the fuel. Um, we could definitely do with some sort of VSC, though, to help us in that regard. Fred Vesti on his way to the pit lane. And uh, we've been very good at pit stops this year. Let's see if he can help us score some big points in that competition. Obviously, we, we're looking to get some sort of two-second stop. I, Because I minimised the, these boxes, I couldn't see it. 2.4 seconds. I mean, that's still quick, but probably not competition-winning speed from the pit crew. Uh, but there, there will be another chance with Paul Aaron, who's immediately <laughs> coming in. He's almost a lap ahead of Vesti, who's just lost so much time. Uh, the fuel is recovering nicely, but we are on lap 19, so we need that to accelerate. As the car gets lighter, it will become easier to recover the fuel. 2.4 second stop for Paul Aaron. We'll deploy battery with him, and he returns to the track side by side with uh, Teo Porsche, who's just got round us. We'll deploy the battery and pick up the pace. So we've lost a place to the Aston Martin, but we'll be right on it to try and take it back. Time for a bit of an update here on lap 25. We didn't catch Terra Porsche. We've then been overtaken by the two Red Bulls who are on medium and hard tyres respectively. We're just trying to make it to the end with our fuel. <laughs> so let's keep our fingers crossed for that. And uh, yeah, we are six seconds clear of Ricardo, who's on much worse tyres. So we can push on the tyres if we want to, but we'll just keep the tyre performance up our sleeves as Vesti moves ahead of Alex Albon. Interesting move for him. Uh, he's gone to hard as Fred, so we'll see if they're the tyre to be on. We, I think we've got a set of hards available for Paul Aaron if we need it, but he's got an extra set of mediums, so that will work out nicely for him later on. All right, both drivers are coming in. That is Oscar Piastri, the race leader, just making his final stop. He's now a lap ahead of Fred Vesti. 2.3 second stop for the Dane. That is nice work from the pit crew. And Paul Aaron is heading in as well. Here he comes. Let's see how the crew perform with the final stop of the evening. Basically, that's all we're really here for is quick pit stops, 2.2 seconds. Nice. That should get us a lovely amount of points. And uh, we should hang on to P10 ahead of Daniel Ricciardo. His tyres sort of fell off the, the cliff so to speak, and uh, 
we pulled away from him. So providing no more spins from Paul Aaron, 10th place should be locked down. George Russell has a mechanical problem that could put him out of the race and we could be promoted to P9. Fred Vessi's recovered well from his earlier spin to 13th. He might yet catch Carlos Sainz for 12th, which is where he started. So considering the early spin dropping him to the back, that's a fairly decent recovery. Right, we're on lap 54 here with Paul Howard, 53 even, because uh, we're almost that far behind. The leaders are a lap ahead. Bottas has just retired. We are closing in on George Russell, who's got a mechanical issue at around two and a half seconds a lap, plus minus. I'm just sort of roughly working that out in my head. So if we go balanced and we go aggressive on the tyres, we might yet be able to do something about the Mercedes, which is ailing. And Piastri is also struggling with a mechanical problem. He's only just over a second ahead of Leclerc. Hamilton only six seconds back. Leclerc also has a mechanical issue. This is quite the scrap at the front of the field. Hard tyres versus soft tyres. Both cars have mechanical problems and uh, they're trying to make it to the end. We're now reeling in George Russell. Let's see if we can catch him on the final lap. The leaders have just started the final lap, but Charles Leclerc has this red warning. Oh, that didn't sound healthy at all in a Ferrari. How does it sound on board? Sounds normal. He just did a 27.6 uh, lap time. Piastri is struggling as well. Paul Aaron is closing in on George Russell. So all these cars that have got me mechanical problems, well, they are going to bite the dust. Russell's got absolutely cream cracker tyres. I'm sure we will find a way past... Oh, he's got a puncture. There we go. Right on cue. We found a way through. And George Russell gives us P9. It should give us uh, P11 as well. He's going he's gonna to finish the race. <laughs> Ricardo goes through. Okay. Well, does, any, does anybody else want to have a puncture? Charles Leclerc has made it to the flag. He wins the Qatar Grand Prix. What a dramatic finish. And... Uh, well, we're on the final lap. We've recovered all the fuel that we need. We'll just conserve to make sure that we get to the flag. No silly hiccups. Stopping just short of it. And uh, Fred Vesti has finished the race. He's in P12. Decent recovery from him. And uh, Paul Aaron, hopefully, will make it to the line here. Yeah, we've got a, a gram of spare fuel. That's all you need. <laughs> P9. There we go. Great job, Paul Aaron. Well done. Check flag now. Okay, so Paul Aaron's two points take him to 44 championship points this season, and it brings us to 72. How did we do in the pit stop competition? That 2.2 second stop for Paul Aaron. Good enough for sixth fastest. Oh, dear. Red Bull have gazumped us. I don't like that. I don't like this. Red Bull, you can go and suck it because... You won, all, you won all the races and the, the championships on the track. Let us have this one, <laughs> honestly. Dude. Anyway, we've still got Abu Dhabi to do, so let's um, skedaddle onto that and see how we get on. Made it to the season finale. Ninth and tenth on the grid for our boys. Vesti, potentially his final race for the team. Paul Aaron here to lead the charge to glory in the future. We actually gave Justin his first outing in the car it's now allowing us to put uh, one of the young drivers in for practice so justin enakaitis got his debut in formula one with an fp1 session here in abu dhabi uh, i haven't seen how he did let's uh, very quickly have a have a look at how he did he actually did 16th which is pretty good uh why has he got a penalty thing next to his name why is there so many <laughs> that's weird anyway uh setups all sorted strategy sorted Let's finish off Season 2 on a high, hopefully with double points. Alrighty, let's get this season finale underway. Red Bull versus Ferrari off the front row. The lights are out. The race is on. How are we doing from the get-go? Uh, Paul Aaron has nipped ahead of his teammate and is nipping at the heels of the Mercedes ahead of him of Antonelli. Teo Porsche has got himself up into second place for the Aston Martin team. That is a good start for him. Fred Vesti down two places. He's fallen behind 
the other Aston, of Daniel Ricciardo. He's had a really shocking start. Look how much ground he's lost. That was not the, the sort of performance we're looking for to send him off potentially on a high. Let's see how the next few laps unfold. We've underfueled completely and uh, we're chasing the, <laughs> the Mercedes. We're diving down the inside. We're up to P8 with Paul Aaron. Fabulous stuff. What Fred Vesti's recovered his race. He's just overtaken Teo Porcher, who at one point was second, and Vesti was at that point 11th. There we go, screaming by with DRS. He's actually got ahead of his teammate Paul Aaron. So uh, Fred has refound his mojo and decided he's remembering how to be a racing driver again. And uh, Paul Aaron is sizing up Porcher as well, who's lost a little bit of pace in this phase of the race. We're only on lap seven, so. Still a long, long way to go. And don't we know just how things can change in Abu Dhabi? Uh, they can shift on a dime. But hopefully we can navigate all of those potential pitfalls and secure two cars finishing in the top 10 because there's a McLaren and a Mercedes behind us and an Aston Martin. We're going very, very nicely. Right, we are actually approaching our pit stop. And <laughs> Paul Aaron finds himself leading the race. Well, for a moment. <laughs> and it's gone. Verstappen has ruined our fun. Um, time for another set of softs for, for for Paul and a set of hard tyres for Fred. But he'll be pushing on those. We still need to recover a lot of our fuel, which uh, is kind of worrying. But we managed to do it in Qatar, so we should be able to do it here. Um, we need to make Fred... Oh, hang on. He needs to... Who can Who can delay a lap? Not Fred is the answer. Uh, so Paul will have to wait a second. Oh, we've got oh, it's the tyres. That's what it is because they're in puncture range. So that's why we're bringing in Fred early. We're bringing him in first and then we're going to bring in Paul Aaron. 2.2 seconds for Paul Aaron. It was a 3.3 second stop for Fred Vesti. He actually had a pit stop issue, which means he's at, he stays behind his teammate, which... Uh, I didn't think we expected to see. We'll deploy and we will get after Teo Porsche. And this time we will overtake the Aston Martin after exiting the pit lane. Through goes Paul Aaron, hopefully. Not quite yet. DRS this time around. There we go. It's wide open. And into ninth place goes the Estonian. Nicely done. Uh, Fred Vesti has a lot of damage. That's not good. Uh, well, we've just been going along. Oh, don't tell me we've been taken out by a back marker. We definitely cut the corner there. And uh, Liam Lawson has pitched us into the barrier. Thank you very much. Not sure what he's trying to do there. But uh, that is... Yeah, I think we just need to retire the car here because there's so much... Well, there's minor damage to the chassis, the rear wing and the suspension. We're just going to retire Fred's car. There's no point in him driving around like that because he's now got a puncture and a penalty. Make that make sense. Um, but yeah, that's ruined his race. Paul Aaron is currently seventh. Yeah, copy. And he's about to pit for medium tyres. So um, one less opportunity. I, I can't believe we've got the penalty for that. That is disgraceful from the stewards. <laughs> Heinous stuff. Okay, final pit stop of the season then for the pit crew. How does it go? 2.1 second stop. Beautiful stuff. Beautiful. We return to the track in P8. Ricardo will have to box off of those worn softs. I'm sure he'll go to something fast, I'm, I'm guessing. But we're only two and a half seconds behind him. There's no way he's stretching nose to the finish. And we're on mediums. We might be able to catch Porsche, maybe Antonelli as well. He'll need to pit. So there could be chances here for us. Right, we are approaching the final lap of this race. We've still got two to do, actually. Uh, but we've recovered all the fuel that we need, which is good. But we are dropping off the back of Porsche. I know I said there might be opportunities. There's basically been nothing. Ricardo has retired from the race. Antonelli boxed and came out several seconds behind us. He's still only just within five seconds of us with his soft tyres aging so we should be all right to finish in p9 um, as max verstappen starts the final lap and um, we'll move ourselves to the final lap of our race verstappen is now uh the race winner 
Are we a lap down? No, we are... We're on the final lap. There we go. So, uh, yeah, this is our final tour of the season. And Paul Aaron has led the team brilliantly. Well, he, he and Fred have shared responsibilities with that. But Paul has come out on top. Some fantastic results in the second half of the season for him. And, uh, yeah, he's done a great job. P9 is a really solid way to finish off the season. And uh, we've had a wonderful year. Let's hope we've topped the so, pit stop P9. competition. Let's find out if we have, because uh, that's what truly matters to us. All right, Max Verstappen won the race. Yeah, 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 we don't care. That's not bothering us. 46 points for Paul Aaron, 28 for Fred Vesti, and that gives us a total of 74, which is 74 more than we scored last season. So pats on the back all round for the AHGP team. How do we do? Oh. Red Bull got a 2.0 second stop. We finished second in the pit stop competition, which, you know, still pretty good, isn't it? That's worth some, some pennies in the bank. And uh, yeah, that is the end of season two. A very productive season. I'm going to go away now and get everything sorted for season three. I'll see you at the opening round, which I don't actually know if it'll be Bahrain or Australia or somewhere else. I've not actually thought about the calendar for 2026 yet. So uh, that will be a surprise for us all. Make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on the video. Subscribe for more F1 Manager content in the future. Leave your congratulations on a wonderful season to Paul and to Fred. And uh, yeah, I'm not sure if Fred's going to be staying with us. So if you want to say goodbye to him, then uh, make sure you get those in as well. But he may return for season three. I'm not decided yet. I'll see you next time. You're the best fans. It's bye for now.